let's talk glow plug reamers. You know, I'm very proud of the ones that we make here in our shop, and I'm not bashful to say I think they're the best on the market. We make three types. We make the standard glow plug reamer for the pencil glow plug. Then we make this larger reamer, which is used on the early series style glow plugs. And then most recently, we're making the long reamer, which is used on the OM606 engines in the E300Ds from 1995 to 1999. Why do I think our reamers are better than the competition? Let me show you. We make all our reamers with a steel threaded housing. Um, this is actually the same strength as your standard glow plug. And the threads are very hard steel, so you don't have a problem stripping threads out. Most of the other competitive reamers on the market are made with a CNC machined aluminum housing with aluminum threads. Now, they may be okay for use one or two times, but this, this one here has only been used you know, two or three times, and you can see that it's already looking kind of beat up, and if you look at the threads closely, you can see they're already starting to wear. So if you get into a situation where you have excessive carbon buildup in the head and you're trying to force uh, this aluminum re reamer into the threads, you can damage it quite easily. We don't like aluminum. That's just clear and simple. Now I'm going to show you a couple things about how to use these reamers. You've heard me harp about the importance of using glow plug reamers before, so I'm not, I'm not gonna harp on that again. But there are a few things I wanna show you, particularly some tips that can help you when you, come, when you get into those situations where you've got some really stubborn carbon that you're dealing with. Let me first show you how a reamer should go into a head that doesn't have any carbon in it. You can literally set it into the glow plug hole and it should turn all the way in and bottom out by hand. Notice I didn't even need a wrench. So if you're having to put a wrench on this, it means there's some pretty heavy carbon in there. And you're going to have to take it easy because if you force it, for instance, if you try to get in here and hammer it in, you can break one of the flutes on the reamer. Look at this one that we got back from a customer. And you see how that flute was broken off? And I'm looking here at the head here of this housing and you can see the socket marks. So somebody had inserted this into the head and were probably reefing on it with a big ratchet wrench. Well, if you run into that problem, stop. Uh, you cannot force it. Um, I've had a situation where I've had to come in here with a, with a small round file and just lightly kind of file away some of the carbon in order to get the reamer to start. And once the reamer starts, if you have to use any force at all to move that reamer in, you can put a socket on it, but I want to see that you only hold it like this, that you hold the socket head close in, and that's all the torque that you're going to put on this reamer. If you force the reamer, you can break it because once again, this is reamer stock. This is a very hardened steel and it's brittle. It's designed to cut. It's designed, it's not designed to abuse. So just a word of caution, that's true on any of these reamers, the pencil reamer as well. Um, if you run into carbon, take it easy, don't force it, and do not use excessive stress or torque when in, we're doing this. There's a couple more things I should mention before I wrap this video up. You might be wondering, uh, hey Kent, if I got a lot of carbon in there, where's all that carbon gonna go? One of the tricks you can use to kind of get as much of that carbon out as you can is to put grease. Just get some heavy molly grease, real thick wheel bearing grease if you have it, and fill the flutes up with grease. And then when you drive the reamer in, and pull it back out, you'll pick up quite a bit of the carbon. You can also blow in there with compressed air when you're done reaming. Most of that carbon will just, you know, uh, blow out the engine after you start it. You don't have to be too concerned as long as it's not excessive. Uh, one of the frustrating things i found when you have a lot of carbon is trying to turn the reamer with a wrench. Uh, 
sometimes you can't get a socket on these. You have to use a box end wrench. And if you get a box end wrench on the reamer head, uh, you know, and try to turn it, it, it goes in and it slips off. And if you try to push, because what you need to be doing is you need to be pushing in while you're turning. That will help the cutting action, especially to get the thread started. Sometimes, uh, uh, particularly on the uh, 617 turbo diesel engines, the carbon is so bad that you can't even get the first thread started on this housing. So it does require that you push in as you turn, and that's very hard to do with a box end wrench that just falls off. So one day I said, hey, I'm going to make a special little wrench. Now this is... This one's not rocket science, it's not too complicated, but let me tell you, it works. I took a 12 millimeter box and wrench, I straightened it out, and I welded a little tab on one side. Now I can put this box end on the head of the reamer, look at that, doesn't fall in, fall through, does it? And of course, when it's in the head, you can push in and turn it. <laughs> Believe it or not, this little wrench has been very successful. We carry these on our website. So if you have an engine with pencil glow plugs, I highly recommend you pick this up. It'll really make the job a lot easier. And then finally, for those real, real stubborn cases, um, there's a motion that you want to use when working the reamer into that carbon. And that's the motion, turn it in, back it out. Turn it in, back it out. It's just like trying to get a rusty bolt out or get a... Uh, you know, you, you work it back and forth. Just keep working it back and forth. If you have a ratchet wrench like this, you know, you can work it in a little back bit and then back it up. Work it in a little bit, back it up. When it binds up, pull it out, and clean off the carbon, and start again. With a little care, you can successfully do this job yourself. And the results can sometimes be amazing. You can literally increase the fuel economy of your engine, you'll improve starting on cold days, and you'll find you'll have much less smoke at startup. So anytime you're messing with your glow plugs, anytime you plan to remove and change them, be sure and ream out the glow plug holes.